When I make the claim Tesla is far ahead in self-driving cars, that may not mean a lot to you. However, this is actually a quote from Nvidia's CEO in a recent interview. And I definitely agree with that. Tesla is far ahead in self-driving cars, but when someone with the kind of credentials as Nvidia's CEO makes this claim, this is actually a really big deal. However, there are those of course, who disagree with this, including Timothy Lee, who has a master's degree in computer science from Princeton and writes for Ars Technica. And in stark contrast, Timothy claims that Waymo is actually years ahead of Tesla. So which is it? Is Tesla ahead or Waymo? I'm John and this is Cleaner Watt. When I claim that Tesla is the leader in autonomous vehicles and self-driving technology, in and of itself, when I make that claim, even if I back that up with data and examples, to a lot of people, when I say this, it really doesn't hold very much weight. However, when the founder and CEO of a company like Nvidia, who is a leader in AI hardware and software makes this claim, it holds, of course, a lot more weight. With that being said, here's what Nvidia's CEO, Jensen Huang, recently said in a Yahoo Finance interview about Tesla FSD. You also saw Elon talking about the incredible infrastructure that he's building. And one of those things that's really revolutionary about version 12 of Tesla's full self-driving is that it's an end-to-end -end generative model and it learns from watching video surround video. I will come back to this topic of end-to-end -to -end AI later on in the video, but I did wanna briefly mention here as a teaser that based on my research, it looks like Waymo is not using an end-to-end -end AI system. So when Jensen uses the word revolutionary to describe Tesla's FSD version 12, this seems to indicate to me that Tesla is the only one amongst the competition that is currently using an end-to-end -end AI system. With that being said, Jensen went on, it learns about how to drive end to end using generative AI to predict the path and how to understand and how to steer the car. And so the technology is really revolutionary and the work that they're doing is incredible. It's really impressive when the CEO of a company like Nvidia calls what Tesla is doing incredible and revolutionary. That really says something because Nvidia really is at the forefront of hardware and software for AI systems. They are a clear leader in this space. However, those comments there are not the headline statement. The big statement that Jensen made comes next when he said, quote, well, Tesla is far ahead in self-driving cars, but every single car someday will have to have autonomous capability. Now, obviously not everyone agrees with Jensen about Tesla being the leader. And one of those who disagree is tech writer, Timothy Lee, who instead insists that quote, while Tesla's FSD version 12.3 seems like a significant improvement over previous versions of FSD, it still lags behind Waymo's technology. As I mentioned earlier, Timothy does hold a master's degree in computer science from Princeton, and he appears to be an expert in AI, but nonetheless, he does offer some explanations for his opinion here, which I'd like to cover. One of the ways that Timothy builds out his argument here is an example of two different drives he had, one with a Tesla vehicle using FSD and the other in a Waymo robo taxi. On this topic, Timothy wrote, quote, during a late March trip to San Francisco, I had a chance to try the latest self-driving technology from both Tesla and Google's Waymo. During a 45 minute test drive in a Tesla Model X, I had to intervene twice to correct mistakes by the FSD software. In contrast, I rode in driverless Waymo vehicles for more than two hours and didn't notice a single mistake. Notice that Timothy used the word driverless here for these Waymo taxis, and they are technically driverless. There is no physical driver in the front seat of the vehicle. But Timothy does point out though, that there are operators remotely ready to um, give commands or at least give direction to these vehicles when they get in trouble. So they're not completely on their own. There are Waymo operators on the other end monitoring these vehicles. On that topic, Timothy wrote, quote, however, Waymo's impressive performance comes with an asterisk. While no one was behind the wheel during my rides, Waymo has remote operators that sometimes provide guidance to its vehicles. Waymo declined to tell me whether or how often remote operators intervened during my rides. And while Tesla's FSD works on all road types, Waymo's taxis avoid freeways. 
Did you catch that? Waymo's robo-taxis do not operate on highways. This is quite interesting when you think about how Tesla has approached autonomy and their autopilot software has been working pretty well on highways for a number of years. So it's kind of interesting that Waymo is avoiding highways and it doesn't make any sense until you realize exactly why that is. And Timothy explains the reason why Waymo does not operate their robo-taxis on highways. Quote, Waymo says remote operators never directly drive its vehicles. Instead, operators answer questions and give hints to guide the vehicle in the right direction. This strategy gets tricky on freeways. If a driverless vehicle asks for help and doesn't get a timely response, it needs to stop and wait. But that's hard to do on a freeway while going 70 miles per hour. So although Waymo has tested its technology on freeways with safety drivers for more than a decade, Waymo's driverless taxis don't use them yet. This makes Waymo's service less useful. I am glad that Timothy at least acknowledges here that not operating their robo taxis on the highway does make them less useful. But nonetheless, the rest of this article does go on to point out ways that he believes that Waymo is ahead of Tesla. And Timothy actually addresses Tesla fans who point to Waymo's limited approach as a problem. Quote, many Tesla fans see these limitations as signs that Waymo is headed for a technological dead end. They see Tesla's FSD with its capacity to operate in all cities and on all road types as a more general technology that will soon surpass Waymo. But this fundamentally misunderstands the situation. Now in this article, the author does give a pretty thorough explanation for his reasoning. And I definitely recommend that you go read the entire article, which I will link to in the video description. I don't have time in this video to cover everything in the article, but I did wanna cover a few brief highlights about the author's reasoning. One of the things that Timothy points out is the fact that Tesla still requires a driver in their vehicles. And because of this, Timothy wrote, quote, I predict that when Tesla begins its driverless transition, it will realize that safety requires a Waymo style incremental rollout. So Tesla hasn't found a different, better way to bring driverless technology to market. Waymo is just so far ahead that it's dealing with challenges Tesla hasn't even started thinking about. Waymo is playing chess while Tesla is still playing checkers. The whole chess and checkers analogy here is actually pretty hilarious because I would say it's exactly the opposite of this. When you have a very limited set of circumstances like a game of checkers, which really doesn't have a lot of different variations of moves that you can make. That I would call a game of checkers. I believe that's actually what Waymo is doing, a game of checkers here. And Tesla is playing the game of chess with a lot more variables and a lot more going on in the game. It really does take a lot more strategy to play a game of chess than it does to play a game of checkers. And because of this, I would say that Tesla is actually playing the game of chess here and that Waymo is playing the game of checkers. But nonetheless, this is a claim that the author makes. Now, going back to the test drives that the author mentioned earlier, the author actually mentions one of the interventions that he had to make in the Tesla Model X. Quote, the version of FSD I tried in March was clearly not ready for driverless operation. For example, I had to intervene to prevent the Model X from running over a plastic lane divider, a mistake Waymo would not have made in 2020. So while FSD 12.3 seems superior to Waymo's technology circa 2018, it's not as good as Waymo's technology at the end of 2020. Within that, the author does concede that there is a huge area where Tesla has an advantage over Waymo, and that comes to data and their access to a larger number of edge cases. Timothy wrote, quote, companies building self-driving technology need to do millions of miles of testing to discover as many of these edge cases as possible. And this is one place where Tesla plausibly has an advantage over Waymo. As we've seen, Waymo has to pay safety drivers for every mile of supervised testing. In contrast, Tesla has convinced thousands of customers to test its full self-driving software for free. Indeed, customers pay thousands of dollars for that privilege. This gives Tesla access to effectively unlimited data. In theory, more data should enable Tesla to efficiently identify edge cases its self-driving software needs to handle. More data should also enable Tesla to train better neural networks. This data difference is definitely something that I've pointed out in past videos, and really it is a key advantage that Tesla has over not only Waymo, but the rest of the competition. Nonetheless, the author does point out though, quote, one issue is that the data Tesla collects is unlabeled. Waymo's safety drivers document each disengagement to help identify flaws in Waymo's software, 
but Tesla's customers are unlikely to do that. Nonetheless, when it comes to unlabeled data for Tesla, they are working on their Dojo supercomputer and their Dojo software, and that's really going to supercharge their efforts with auto labeling. But nonetheless, I believe that with all their data, this gives Tesla a huge advantage in this particular space. Okay, moving back to the topic of Tesla's FSD, supervised FSD version 12, being an end-to-end -end AI system. The author of this article wrote, quote, he, referring to Elon Musk, has described FSD version 12 as using end-to-end -end neural nets. He is investing billions of dollars in hardware to train those neural networks using vast amounts of data collected from Tesla customers. If you buy Sutton's argument, you might expect Tesla to jump ahead of Waymo. Now, once again, as a reminder, NVIDIA's CEO called Tesla's end-to-end -end AI approach revolutionary. And when you see Tesla's FSD version 12 actually making decisions in real time, it's pretty incredible to watch. And the system is getting very human-like in the way it drives in many instances. Waymo, on the other hand, according to my research, is not using an end-to-end -end AI system, but they apparently still use a lot of code in their self-driving software. On the self-driving cars Reddit page, I came across a post by Brandon Live, and he linked to a podcast here that really shows, at least at the point of April of last year, that Waymo was not using an end-to-end -end AI system. So I followed that link and actually listened to a bit of this podcast, which was an interview of the head of research at Waymo, Drago. And during that podcast, starting around the 36 minute and 45 second timestamp, Drago said, quote, our stack is not an end-to-end -end neural network. Now, once again, the significance of an end-to-end -end AI system is that it doesn't have a bunch of code telling the vehicle what to do, but based on the neural net and the training of that neural net, the software actually makes decisions in real time. So while NVIDIA's CEO calls Tesla's end-to-end -end AI approach revolutionary, Timothy Lee actually points out what he believes to be a problem in this approach. Timothy wrote, quote, LLMs, which refers to large language models, hallucinate. They fail at simple tasks like counting objects and reading analog clocks. LLMs are great for applications where accuracy isn't that important or where a human being is checking the output after it's generated. But if you need very high accuracy, they are not a good choice. Self-driving systems do need very high accuracy, and it's not obvious that an end-to-end -end neural network with enough data and computing power will necessarily achieve it. Business professor Ethan Mollick has written about the jagged frontier. Complex AI systems are often impressively good at some tasks, but surprisingly bad at others. Tesla may get really good at navigating freeways, intersections, and traffic circles, but make little progress on avoiding wet cement or understanding the hand signals of police officers. So while Timothy has his doubts that an end-to-end -end AI system will ever be accurate enough to power a full self-driving vehicle safely without a human driver, I personally believe that's a little bit short-sighted and that Tesla will work out the details with enough data and with enough training. And I believe the opinion of Nvidia's CEO, Jensen, actually holds more weight in this particular instance. Not just because I agree with what the CEO of Nvidia says, but also because I believe once again, this is being a little bit short-sighted in a technology that really is still quite young. AI and end-to-end -end AI networks are really still quite young, and there will be a lot more development in the coming years. And the basic limitations now, I believe, will be overcome in not too much time because there's a lot of effort and there's a lot of smart people working on these problems. With that being said, when it comes to scalability, the author of this article does go on to admit that Waymo's approach may have an economics problem. Timothy wrote, quote, Waymo's approach to this problem is to build a mostly automated system that is able to gracefully fall back on human assistance when needed. While this works quite well from a safety perspective, I've started to wonder about the economics of it. If Waymo's vehicles were constantly asking for remote guidance, Waymo might need to hire so many remote operators that it negates the cost savings that come from not needing a driver. I also want to bring up the topic of hardware scalability. While Waymo relies heavily on a much more expensive and complex sensor suite that includes ultrasonic sensors, LiDAR, and radar in addition to cameras, Tesla instead relies on Tesla Vision, which is just a fancy word for using cameras to perceive the world around the car, and Elon has been very adamant in his opinion that LiDAR is not necessary for autonomous vehicles. In addition, while the current Model S and X are once again equipped with radar sensors, the current Model 3 and Ys are not. 
Now there have been some sightings of Tesla engineering vehicles with a LiDAR system on the top of the vehicle. And I assume this is for calibration and testing and really benchmarking their Tesla vision system. But LiDAR itself is not something that Tesla installs on production vehicles. So when it comes to sensors, while Tesla's vehicles simply have eight to nine cameras and the Model S and X have radar sensors, each Waymo iPACE vehicle includes 26 cameras, six radar sensors, five LiDAR sensors, and 14 ultrasonic sensors. So when it comes to the scalability of hardware, if Tesla is able to achieve full autonomy with their current sensor suite, with cameras and possibly with radar, if they're able to do that with a simple sensor suite as compared to Waymo, which needs way more sensors, Tesla is going to be able to do that with a much lower cost and it's going to be much easier to scale that system and they have many more vehicles with that hardware already installed. In addition, Tesla is making very rapid progress with their FSD version 12 already and Elon Musk recently posted on x.com quote, BTW 12.4 goes to internal release this weekend and limited external beta next week roughly 5x to 10x improvement in miles per intervention versus 12.3. 12.5 will be out late June. We'll also see a major improvement in MPI, which refers to miles per intervention and is single stack. No more implicit stack on highways. So really in the end, only time will tell whose approach is really right. But I personally believe that Tesla's approach is the right one to solving general autonomy on a wide scale in vehicles. Do let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. I'd also like to say once again, thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.